this is Big Ray. And you know me, I'm the Mark of the Masters, the man with the plan. Big Ray here to stay to talk some wrestling today. But this is going to be something a little different. Now, you probably say, well, Ray, what are you doing? Well, believe it or not, I'm actually driving. And um, I've been invited to the private workout facility of a very interesting individual in professional wrestling. Now, his name is Malta the Damager. He is the nephew of WWE Hall of Famer Baron Mikel Sakluna. Now, I thought it'd be a little fun if you guys take this little road trip with me. And uh, I'm not gonna tell you where the secret place is, but again, I've been invited there and I thought it'd be fun if you guys come. So join me and uh, it's gonna be very interesting, to say the least. See you guys there. All right, well, I'm here. I have no idea where the heck I'm going. I don't even know if I should. All right, let's just do it. Let's go. Malta? Malta? Where the hell is this guy? Authorized personnel only. All right. What the hell is this place? Hello? What the hell? Ray, what the hell? What is this? The Empire State Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Big Ray, and I'm standing next to a seven-foot monster. Guys, I got to be honest with you. I wasn't really sure about accepting um, this invitation to this training facility, but I wanted to talk to this gentleman. Anyway, uh, let's just jump right into this interview. Uh, Malta, Malta, where is the Isle of Malta? What is, what are the Maltese people? Should I be insulted by that question? What or where is the island of Malta? Didn't you go to school? Didn't you study geography? The Isle of Malta is, is an island paradise and an island fortress located smack dab in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. We have the oldest traces of man-made civilization in the world, over a thousand years older than the pyramids. So right then off the bat, by you telling me you don't know what Malta is or where Malta is, I know I've met people like you all over New York City, all right? You're walking around telling me, what's Malta? Is it a Goya drink? Well, it's not a Goya drink, Ray. It happens to be a place of culture and history, something that in America they really don't know too much about because they just knock down the history and build over it. But go ahead, talk about something that you may know a little bit better about because geography isn't one of them. Well, listen, I, I, number one, I think we're getting off the wrong foot here. I, I didn't mean to disrespect. I have a lot of respect for you. I mean, not only because you're such a monster, but I do know a lot about your uncle, and that's Baron Mikelsa Kluna. Now, if you guys don't know who this is, this is a W. W.E. Hall of Famer. One of the first. One of the first. Well, would you like to share some something about your uncle? Like, how did he become your hero? Well, I'll tell you something. I love to spoon feed it to the audience that doesn't know, the uneducated audience that only knows the Impact Stunt Show that's going on on TV today. But actual wrestling was pioneered by my uncle Baron Sikluna by guys like Gorgeous George, Haystacks Calhoun, Andre the Giant, and people of greatness, Bruno Sammartino, Dominic Danucci, Bobo Brazil. So don't just look up my Uncle Baron Mikel Cicluna. Look them all up. 
because that was the foundation what built wrestling to what you watch today and they never saw the big dollars that all of these movie star wrestlers are seeing today they never saw that but they built the business and other people are reap reaping the benefits from it and none of them could be a pimple on their butt now let's speak about your uncle specifically now your uncle has been known to be I think they call him the uh, the originator of using the foreign object if I'm correct sir so what I want to ask you is again how did he help mold you I mean do you use foreign objects during your matches well I'll tell you something all right sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do when you're out there in the ring to get a victory all right I'll tell you how it is that my uncle inspired me to be a professional wrestler because I grew up in Astoria, Queens and growing up there in New York during the 70s and the 80s and the early 90s everybody every demographic of people that's there in Queens is the most diverse uh, neighborhood in the whole planet and you have people from all over that are proud to be Greek they're proud to be Puerto Rican they're proud to be black they're proud to be Irish they're proud to be Jewish they're proud to be who they are so and then back then when I was growing up the world was kind of segregated so everybody was kind of hanging out with people of their own cultures and the interculture thing wasn't really happening back then and uh, being a Maltese person you tell somebody yeah I'm, I'm Maltese and they tell me well what's that they don't know where it is uh, and, and things like that so you know I would try to be fitting in with different demographics but they wouldn't they wouldn't let me into the inner circle all the way because I'm not a hundred percent or whatever that they think that they are nobody's a hundred percent anything we're all made up of different people and the more we mix it up then you'll get back to what the original man was a dark skinned slanty eyed guy all right that's a mixture of cultures but getting back to my uncle the Baron Mikel Cicluna all right he's not only was my inspiration but he and my uncle he's my he was my mentor he was my trainer he was an inspiration to me and when I told people you know like the wrestler from the Isle of Malta Baron Mikel Cicluna then they got it before they didn't get it they thought that like I said it was a Goya drink or Malta India or Malta Goya or there's a Maltese dog no we're not a dog all right we're actual people can you imagine if we had enough people to make a noise, how would you like it if they had a dog called the Puerto Rican dog? Or if there was a dog called the African American dog? How do you think we feel about that? But anyway, to get, getting besides that, we'll, we'll go back. My uncle was the number one contender against Bruno Sammartino during 1966, 1967, and 1968. He headlined the Madison Square Garden, the Boston Garden, Japan, all over the world. And they were the two best wrestlers yeah, you talk about my uncle with the foreign object, right? But before that, he was one of the most pure wrestlers. When he came over here from Malta on the ship with my father after World War II, they went to Canada first. He didn't come here to America. And then he trained up there with, with Stu Hart in the, in, in the dungeon, all right? When, when Bret Hart probably wasn't even born, you know? And uh, anyway, they were the most two pure athletes at the time. They worked out seven days a week each day different body parts they didn't bulk themselves up uh, the easy way which we all know what it is but I don't need to say but I can tell you this he's just a true inspiration he died a few years back due to pancreatic cancer but four months before he died he was still curling 70 pound dumbbells at nearly 70 years old and that's a real man he didn't drop dead at 40 years old and neither did I well I have a follow-up question to that. Now, again, the Baron was, I, I think he was an underrated superstar in the WWF at the time. Now, a lot of people remember the Baron from a segment involving Muhammad Ali and Gorilla Monsoon. Now, we spoke a little while ago off-air about this, and I want you to tell the fans how important your uncle was actually uh, to be a part of that 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 whole scene that brought Muhammad Ali into wrestling well for those of you who know the ins and outs of the business you know that the thing with Muhammad Ali during that time was like when Mike Tyson was in the ring with Stone Cold Steve Austin and they were having that feud going on there it was the biggest thing happening in wrestling at that time and my uncle was a person who McMahon knew 
could be trusted in there not to make that match about himself, but to more make it about Muhammad Ali and Gorilla Monsoon. And he did what he had to do when he was out there. But you know what? That's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is when he was co-holder of the WWF Tag Team Championships with Slugger Sloan and also with King Curtis Iakea and how he really was uh, like very instrumental in like you talking about what he was doing later on in the ring going in with the with the with the roll of uh, uh, of quarters and knocking people out and coming out with different objects out of his tight and they never could find it we couldn't figure out where he put it but I can tell you this you know he was he was a man amongst men and what he did in and out of the ring and even later on towards the ring people remember him losing on the Channel 9 show but you want to know what? When he was at the height of his career, he was a big winner. He was the number one contender. He was a champion. So, the, But what he was doing on that Channel 9 show, on the Midnight Show, what he was doing then is what you don't really see today. He was bringing up the new guys. And the other guys don't know how to lie down. The other guys don't know how to say it's done. But my, my uncle, he did stuff the right way. And that's the way that I believe. And that, that's, that's the way that he taught me. That's the way he trained me. And that is the respect that I have for the business. I don't know what happened in the world. It was like the access shifted 360 degrees. And, and, and what was on the bottom rose to the top. And what was on the top rose to the bottom. And I seen everybody who was doing everything that my uncle said was in the business and I seen them get ahead and I seen them on TV and they got their own action figure you want to know what good for you you can keep it you can keep it I stood in line I've been doing my thing I've been believing I'm on a mission from tradition I believe in the old school way that I was taught by the Baron Mikel Cicluna and I feel finally now there's a feeling that I have, Big Ray, that's bigger than you and it's bigger than me. It's bigger than anybody. It's, it, it's, 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 it's a surreal feeling that I have. It's overwhelming. It's, it's like an entity of power that's telling me, no matter what, against all odds, it's my time now. It is my time now. Well, let, let, let's, let's speak about Malta the Damager. Now, now we know a little bit about, about where you come from. We know a little bit about your uncle. Now, I want to know a little bit about you. Now, I want the fans here at OneWrestling.com, YouTube backslash One Wrestling Video. I want them to know about you. Now, you're a big, big man. Now, I've seen you wrestle live. You're extremely athletic. You're creative, innovative with your moves. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Malta the Damager? Well, that's what it's about. See, I'm, first I'm going to touch on the last thing you said, then the first thing. All right? It's about the moves. Wrestling fans, listen up, bro. It's about originality. It's about coming up with innovating moves. And it's about going out there and being different. Not just recreating something that's been done over and over and over again. You want to talk about Malta the Damager, who I am, what I am? Let me tell you something. Malta the Damager is a name that was given to me by people who used to check me out on the New York hardcore punk rock scene because I used to go into mosh pits and create huge holes in, in, in places that were packed from wall to wall and there wasn't even any room to breathe. And people would be like, who is that guy? They'd be like, that's a Maltese guy out there. And then they started calling me Malta the Damager because they knew I was from Malta, which was pretty obscure. And whenever I'm confronted with a problem, damages my business. So. That's how I come up with the name Malta the Damager. And then before I even trained with my uncle to be a professional wrestler, before that I did three years doing tie fighting, cock fighting, and underground street fighting in, in the streets of New York before ultimate fighting was around. You know, people want to go around talking about ultimate fighting like it's real, and they want to talk about wrestling like it's not. But I got news for you guys. Every page out of the ultimate fighting book was taken out of a, out of a wrestling textbook. All right? Don't forget that. It's a promotion just like professional wrestling. All right? And most of us can hang there. But I don't think that if they came from there into a wrestling ring that they can hang with us. As a matter of fact, I was just on my beloved island of Malta this past summer. And I fought three rounds against the heavyweight champion of Malta, Billy Corrido. And the reason why I did it, we did it as, 
as sportsmen. Some guy interviewed us when we were there, and, and they told me, what is it that you're doing over here? I says, I'm proving as a professional wrestler, athlete, that we can hang in any sport, almost any sport that there is. But I don't believe that anybody can walk in from a boxing, being a boxer, being a swimmer, being an ultimate fighter and jump into the ring and do what we do as professional wrestlers. And I proved that because I went three rounds with the guy. We fought like sm sportsmen, clean. We didn't fight to take each other's heads off, but we landed some bombs. And I'll be putting it up on YouTube soon so you can check it out. Now, I I'm going to totally agree with you because it's well documented that there are a lot of uh, let's just say professional athletes from other sports that try to get into the ring and they say that the training that it takes to be in that ring the 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 lung capacity you have to develop <laughs> to breathe in the air to run the ropes to, to, to take those bumps I mean you so guys lick it and keep on ticking right you guys are, are some of the most well trained and well trained athletes in the world now a perfect example is that is Bam Bam Bigelow versus Lawrence Taylor the guy couldn't breathe. A professional football, which everybody thinks is so real and so much more realer. Even though after, after one play, they take a break, they get their breath back, they line back up. There's all this big to-do over there. Where's our break? Where's our cut? I get people tell me, oh, yeah, uh, oh, oh, yeah, you do wrestling. I don't know if I'm going to go and see that. But, yo, I just seen The Matrix, and that's dope. I said, wait a second. You don't think wrestling is better than a movie? I said, That's, that guy didn't do his own stunts. They cut. He went into a trailer with air conditioning. Somebody with heart, like a professional wrestler, came out there and did the stunt. And then the actor came back out and took all the credit for it. So that, in the eyes of, of, of the mainstream public, is real. As opposed to wrestling, it's got some shenanigans going on. Well, now, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to actually cut away real quick, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bring in a fan question. All right? Let, 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 we're going to continue talking about Malta, but I have a fan. His name is Andre, and you can follow him on Andre on Twitter at Andre underscore Corbeil. He's a good friend of mine. He's also a partner at the Can-Am Wrestling Show. You can find us every Friday nights on Andre Corbeil's YouTube. Now, he had a question. What's good, Andre? Now, he had a question for you regarding a wrestler that you – tag team with recently and unfortunately we lost and a lot of people <clears throat> don't give this wrestler a lot of credit his name is Big Daddy V and people know him as King Mabel um, you did work with him a lot Viscera, Viscera. There are many different faces of, of Big Daddy V a absolutely so, so now much like and this is going to be a very personal question so I want you to, to, to feel free to answer this now the WWE didn't really give uh, viscera, let's just say a a proper send off. And they I didn't do it to my uncle. He's in the Hall of Fame. They wrote a blog. There was no mention on Raw. They didn't send flowers to the wake. And he spent over 30 years in the business. Yes, that's a bad reflection of the corporate WWE. It's a bad reflection. Let's talk about Big Daddy for a minute. If you being in front of this man. I fought him. I fought him twice in two tables matches. The sheer size of the man, six foot ten, four hundred and sixty seven pounds. And agility. Alright? You don't think it, you may have not seen it. This guy can throw a spin and back kick. He dominated in Japan. He's truly I mean his his, his, his boss man slam that he does. I mean, how's he doing that? Getting back uh, the sheer sizes as, as, as he is, as he was, as he was. But I'll tell you something. It's not right. He did a lot. He was the 1996 King of the Ring. He was the tag team champs. He did, a, he did an awful lot. He was in the ministry. He came in and out as different characters of the business. He dedicated his whole life to it. He just passed away, what, one month ago? Around a month ago he passed away? I mean, and, and, and up until a month ago, we're still talking. He was going to go to Africa, India, here, that. Still touring the world, doing his thing. So why wasn't that a mention? That is something. That is something that's despicable. Well, now, I, I, I want to end, well, not end the interview, but really quickly, I wanted to talk about something on a positive note. Now, Really quickly, you did work again with, with, with Big, Daddy, Big Daddy V. Do you have a 
cool little story maybe you can tell about Big Daddy V and the type of guy he was on a positive note? Yeah, well, I can tell you something. Me and Big Daddy V, we had this match. He put me in a Samoan drop, but you can see it. It's on YouTube. It says, Big Daddy V puts him onto the damage to a table. Puts me in a Samoan drop. All 467 pounds comes down on me. It felt like somebody stepped on the water bug and my chest was the water bug. I walked out of there with two broken ribs and a punctured lung for that match. Knocked me out of wrestling for six months. We had, I came to another FWE event. I was there with my son in the audience. And I'm going to put this up too. I just didn't put, piece it together yet. And, I, and we had a compelling segment where he was fighting this big guy, Xander Page, and he was making references to me. And then he come out and he's calling me out in the ring and this and that. Then I found him was getting in the ring. I was saying something. And he came out and he, and, and he did a personal attack on me, you know, uh, against my wife, against my kids. And we really had probably the most compelling segment that I've seen in an indie, indie wrestling show in, in forever. It was so compelling. The, the audience was hanging on every last word. They were so into it. They wanted to see the return match. We had a return match. I winded up squeaking out ahead from the big Mastodon, Big Daddy V in that match. I came out ahead just to squeak. But you know what? He had respect for me afterwards. He shook my hand as a man, as an athlete, as a giant. After that, we joined forces and became a tag team. The biggest tag team in the world. We both thought it was a great thing. We both thought that it was something that maybe Vince or somebody would look upon and shine. And maybe we'd have another run in the WWE right now had this tragedy not happened. So you know what? It was, it, it, it's a damn shame what happened to him. He was a wonderful, wonderful guy. Uh, like I said, he dedicated his whole life to the business. And if that doesn't deserve respect, nothing does. Well, now... I see here that you have this beautiful title, the Empire State title, World Premier Wrestling, WPW. Where did you get this title? Who did you defeat for the title? And tell us a little bit about what this title means to you. Because I know, I know if you guys don't know, this is the man that runs the New York area, my friend. He is the Empire State champion. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that, my friend? Well, it's been a long time coming. I can tell you that this didn't happen to me overnight. I've been wrestling since 1996. 1996. All right? It's a long, hard road. Longer than me than most. But I can tell you something. This belt means the world to me. It's the Empire State Championship. It might as well be the World Heavyweight Championship. Because right now it's all about. WPW right now it's all about being the Empire State Champion and right now it's all about defending this title and I'll tell you what I defend this title against anybody anytime anywhere no matter who you are no matter who you've been you think you're a star I'm the Galactus of pro wrestling I devour stars like planets until I reign supreme well now my, my last question to you is I mean, a lot of people tend to always make fun of wrestling, you know? I mean, they always say it's a bunch of guys rolling around half naked. You know, they, they, they basically say wrestling is, well, fake. Well, how do you feel about that? You think it's fake? You think wrestling is fake? You think wrestling is fake? Oh! More to the damager is the only real thing in professional wrestling. The only real thing. 